Let's review some basic anatomy. Most of this will be uh, very basic for us, but as we know that the cornea is the front part of the eye, the uh, lens sits behind it, and the macula is the area between the two vascular arcades coming off the optic nerve. And this is really where macular degeneration uh, begins. Let's look at the anatomy a little bit better. We know that the macula is between the two arcades, and we know that the macula is really the central part of the retina that has specialized layers of cells. There's the rods and cones, which are the light-sensitive cells, and then there's the retinal pigment epithelium, which is really the protective structure underneath the retina. And then underneath the RPE, we have the choroid, which is the blood supply uh, to the RPE and to the outer segments of the rods and cones. Let's look how macular degeneration really starts. This is a cross-section of a healthy macula. And you know that the retinal cells are metabolically active, so they have byproducts of waste. Those waste products come across the RPE through Brooks membrane into the choroid where they come out of the eye. Nutrition then goes the other way across. And what happens in macular degeneration is we start to get an accumulation of material called drusen uh, between the Brooks membrane and the RPE. And this kind of just cycles on itself in the sense that once you impair uh, the transport, then you have a blockage and it kind of feeds on a cycle on its own. As we all know, there's two types of macular degeneration. There's a dry form, which is the more common, less severe form, and this affects about 10% of the population over 55. And then there's the wet form of macular degeneration, and this is what causes the majority of blindness. It is responsible for about 88% of those with uh, legally blind vision, and historically, we know that about 10% of dry turns wet per year. The basic lesion, as we just talked about, is the drus, or pleural drusen, and this represents thickening of the inner aspect of Brooks membrane. You see a normal healthy retina in the upper right corner, and then you see the drusen uh, accumulating in the macula in the lower picture. And we classify drusen as hard drusen, which can be small and well-defined or they can be soft drusen, which can be less well-defined. And each type of drusen does have a difference in prognosis. We also categorize drusen as small, medium, and large. And this really just gives us an idea of the severity of the disease. Small, hard drusen are usually better than large, soft drusen. Along with drusen, we can see pigment clumping. The drusen eventually affects the RPE cells that are overlying, and those RPE cells can deteriorate. If they deteriorate lightly, we see call it mild pigmentary changes or mild pigment clumping. More is moderate, and then where you get more complete dropout or real hyperpigmentation, we call that severe pigment clumping. And this also allows us to categorize and classify what type of macular de degeneration you have. I'm often asked by patients, can you lose vision from dry macular? They always assume that dry macular is the better form, and it is, but there is some forms of dry in which you can have legal blindness. And let's look at how that works. We know that the RPE, the photoreceptors, and the choroid really all work together in a complex. If one dies, they all die. And so in macular degeneration, you start to get a breakdown of the RPE. If the RPE dies, the photoreceptors die, and eventually the choroid atrophies. This is a condition that we call geographic atrophy. And as you can see here in this bottom picture, you have a complete wipeout of the central retina. And in some cases, you only have a central island where they're still seeing. And what you're looking at here is there's no RPE, you're looking at bare sclera, and the choroid has completely atrophied to where you can only see some large choroidal vessels. People with geographic atrophy can have very, very profound vision loss, and so it is that 10% of dry that turns into geographic atrophy. Let's look at the clinical signs of wet macular degeneration. As we all know, if you see hemorrhage in the retina, if you see exudate in the retina or subretinal fluid in a patient with macular degeneration, it usually means that there is some neovascular conversion. Let's look at how wet macular degeneration actually develops. So we talked about the drusen, and the drusen wears out that Brooks membrane. Brooks membrane is a collagenous structure. And the way I explain it to my patients is you get a crack in the sidewalk or you get a crack in Brooks membrane, and then a weed pops through that crack. In this case, that weed is the abnormal blood vessels in the choroid that are going to go grow through. They grow into the sub-RPE space, 
And I mentioned that they are abnormal blood vessels, and they're abnormal because they eventually leak. And they are not able to hold the fluid. They're not able to hold the blood. And this is why, why we see subretinal hemorrhage and why we see subretinal fluid in these cases. If you get enough tension on the RPE, you actually get a tear in the RPE. And this allows the fluid to go into the subretinal space. And this is where people see distortion from. They have this bowing of their central retina, and it causes everything to be distorted. If you don't treat wet macular degeneration, the natural history or the natural course is actually very well known. Uh, you end up with a complete discoform scar, and this is severe irreversible vision loss. And this accounts for about 80% of severe vision loss in macular degeneration. So why is it important to tell dry from wet, and how do we tell dry from wet? Well, first of all, it's important because it's, it allows us to know your prognosis. We know that dry macular degeneration generally has a good prognosis. We know that wet macular degeneration has a very poor prognosis, and it's also important for treatment. We know that dry, there is no cure for it. We talk about lifestyle modification. We talk about eye vitamins. Wet macular, on the other hand, requires immediate intervention and is usually an emergency. So one of the tests that we do as a retina specialist in our office is called a fluorescein angiogram. And the fluorescein angiogram allows us to classify and determine whether macular degeneration is uh, early or late, or dry or wet. It uses a specialized camera that shines light into the eye. This camera then projects an image back using a filter, and we see a highlighted vasculature. The dye is injected into the arm. It takes about 8 to 15 seconds as it crosses through the circulation, and it reaches the eye. We use then a high-speed camera to watch how it goes through the arteries, and then it comes back through the veins. And you'll see here in this bottom series of photographs that the veins initially are dark when there's no fluorescein dye in them. And as the dye starts to come through, you see that the arteries are the first to light up, and those are um, turning white. And then as it comes back through the veins, you see all of the vasculature start to turn white. When it's dry macular degeneration, the retinal blood vessels are usually competent, meaning that the dye stays within them. Uh, so the dye comes through, and then it leaves, and the only thing that you see in the late phases is a little highlighting of the optic nerve, which stains. But otherwise, the macula turns dark again. Whereas in wet macular degeneration, and we can see in this color photograph that the wet macular degeneration is clearly there. There's subretinal hemorrhage. There's some elevation. But you see in the earlies and the lates that these abnormal blood vessels are incompetent, meaning that they leak dye. They can't hold on to the dye. And so as the dye comes in, in the later phases, it leaks out. And see, so we see late leakage or late hyperfluorescence. And this is a clear indicator of wet macular degeneration. We can also classify wet as a couple different types. There is classic, minimally classic, or occult lesions. And classic essentially means that it is a well-defined uh, lesion in the sense that you see early hyperfluorescence of the lesion. Whereas occult, you're really not sure entirely where the borders of the lesion are. So you see this late hyperfluorescence. And we call those poorly defined lesions. And this also determines how we treat patients and their overall prognosis. So let's look at a classic choroidal neovascular membrane. You see in the early phase, it lights up early. You see the entire margins. And in the late phase, it leaks, and the margins become a little bit more less identified. Whereas in an occult CNV, you're really not sure where it is in the early phases. You see some hyperfluorescence, but nothing that's clearly delineated. You may have blood in, in, in the picture, which may be blocking. You may have a pigment epithelial detachment which may also block your view. Uh, and in the late phases, we just see the dye kind of come out and scatter. A little bit harder to treat these lesions historically because we didn't know where the margins of the lesions were. So let's summarize macular degeneration and what we just talked about. So we talked that macular degeneration can be asymptomatic in the majority of people. They usually just have drusen. And drusen can turn to symptomatic dry macular degeneration if you get enough RPE loss or if you have a collection of drusen material that elevates the, the RPE into what we would call a pigment epithelial detachment. And then that can go to geographic atrophy, which we talked about was 10 to 20% of severe vision loss. 
How long does it take for asymptomatic to get to symptomatic or to geographic atrophy? It's generally about 10 years. So this is a very slow disease, and it gives us a lot of time to intervene. On the other hand, let's look at wet. Asymptomatic dry can turn to wet macular almost instantaneously. You can go to bed one night and wake up the next day with it wet. As we talked about, there's a number of different types of lesions, and then this can go to a discoform scar if it's left untreated, which is responsible for about 80% of blindness in this disorder. The time from an asymptomatic dry turning wet to complete blindness is approximately one year, so it's much faster rate and it's much faster course than dry macular degeneration, and hence it is an emergency.